Well, hey, Maddie and Jill here, and we're at church getting ready for Sunday services, and we're so glad that you've been able to join us right now. We're a church that loves God, loves people, and loves life. We believe this message is going to be impactful for you, that it will help you as you walk the journey of life that you're on. And we're just really glad that you joined us online today. So if this is helpful for you, why don't you think about sharing it with a friend and letting it be helpful for them, or maybe just subscribing so you don't miss any videos in the future. We love you. We believe that God has the best for you, and we pray that He blesses you in all that you do. Well, if you got your Bibles, why don't you open with me to Luke chapter 12, if you're joining us online, we're grateful you're a part of the service as well. You can open your Bibles too, and I just love the picture of people at home or wherever you're watching, also participating fully in the service and receiving the Word, worshipping, and it's powerful. So we're going to be reading from Luke 12, but uh, I think I just want to reiterate what I said last week uh, about us getting back to church, that Whatever it looks like for you is what it looks like for you. And we as a church want to do everything we can to serve and help and bless you. So if that means it's going to take some time and that's why you're live streaming into the service and maybe you want to take some time coming back to church, I just want you to know on behalf of Jill and I and our team, we support you and we love you and we're grateful for you. Um, if you're obviously here today and you're like, that's okay, but it still maybe is tough for you. We just want you to know it's okay. And... Um, if you want to come to church and, and wear a mask, that's absolutely fine. You're not going to be shamed for that. Uh, no one's going to alienate you. Um, do what you've got to do. But just want you to know that we support and we love you. And we try to be as best we can, the most inclusive church we can. Um, because we don't own anyone. We don't control anyone. We're here to serve people. Um, so that's the type of church we are. Is that okay to say? Is that all right? So as we get back into this thing and continue on uh, building... The church that Jesus himself said the gates of hell would not prevail against. See, we're on the winning team, so we just got to keep moving. That's all you got to do, really. Um, and so I'm excited about that. So very good. All right, Luke chapter 12. Actually, before I do that, I just want to remind everyone, last week I preached a message called It's Good to See You because it was good to see you last week. And... It was just great to see you, but I wanted to talk, I wanted to start talking about the power of community and how if we're not careful right now, we could lose that understanding of how important community is for you and for me. So I preached a message called, It's Good to See You. From Psalm 122 and verse 1, it says this, Let us go to the house of the Lord. As they said that, the psalmist says, My heart leapt for joy. And now we're here, O Jerusalem, inside Jerusalem's walls. And also Psalm 84. And I love this. It says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. And in verse, sorry, Luke 12, verse 4, Jesus says this. He says, I tell you, friends, do not fear those who kill the body. And after that, have nothing more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. To fear who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. You are of more value than many sparrows. I want to preach a message today called, It's Good to Know You. It's good to know you today. Would you pray with me, Lord? We love you. Thank you for the power of your word this morning, Lord. Thank you as we're gathering and beginning to gather back together as a church, Lord. Father, thank you that there's so much power in community, Lord. And Father, we just thank you for everything you're doing. We ask that you would bless this time, speak through your word, breathe life through your word um, to us. Help us to, to be better and be more of whatever you need us to be, Lord. So Father, we thank you for that, God. And we pray for colonial kids right now, God. Thank you that you're building them up. You're charging them fully, your Holy Spirit to be absolutely impactful in their world, in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen in church this morning? Last week I spoke about a message, or I spoke a message called, It's Good to See You. My three encouragements were this, we were created for community, it's what we are created for. We're created uh, for community, but community is actually where God's presence dwells. So it's not a waste of time. It's not like we gather in, uh, together and, 
it's just a social calendar event. No, it's actually God's choice, His preference that when we gather as believers, He chooses to show up. That's His idea. It's not my idea. It's not like some preacher walked into a church one day and said, Hey, God, can you show up in this meeting? That would be awesome. No, it's God's idea. Community. And community is where we're reminded of who we are in Christ. Community is the key. So it's good to see you. It's good to see you in church. It's good to see you on the live stream today. It's good to see you planted in the house of the Lord and flourishing in his courts. Why? Because community is so important. So last week, it was good to see you. This week, it's good to know you because I want to speak today about what it means to know people, be in community and actually know people, but also be known by people. It's good to know you. See, it's one thing just to see a person, but it makes life all the more sweeter and more amazing when you actually know someone. It's good to know you. It's good to do life with you. Because here's the truth this morning is we can't do life alone. Seeing people and knowing people is actually what real community is all about. You know, being in community is actually vital for our health. It's actually really important for our vitality. Actual health. A friend of mine shared this recently, and I, I took a deeper dive into this. But they posted about this study, this Harvard study. It was a social science study that was done by Harvard. It was pretty extensive. It, was, it included 7,000 people over the course of nine years. So first of all, two things. That's a really big amount of people to study and a, and a long time. Okay. 7,000 participants over nine years. And this is what the researchers found in this science, uh, social science study. It said this, the most isolated people in that group were three times more likely to die than those with relational connections. Three times more likely. People who are isolated versus connected. And it went on and said this, people who even had bad health habits, such as smoking, poor eating habits, obesity or alcohol use, but had strong social ties, lived significantly longer than people who had great health habits but were isolated. And my friend wrote this because he's a pretty funny guy. He said, so in other words, it's better to eat Twinkies with good friends than to eat broccoli alone. (laughs) But the Harvard researcher made this remark, said, if you belong to no groups, no social groups, no connection, no relational connection, don't know anyone, but then you decide to to join one or get connected, you cut your risk of dying in half over the next year. It's good to know you and it's good to know people and be known. That's the bottom line is you need me and I need you. We need each other in life. Community is not just a good idea, it is a God idea. Community in Jesus' name is a God-sized idea. And I don't know about you, but if God thinks it's good, I've kind of reached a point in my faith where I'm like, it must just be good. If God thinks it's good and He ordains it and He has blessed it, then I want whatever God thinks is like that. So I want to keep talking just for a moment about community in this time. And these might just be two reminders for you today, but I pray they'd go deep. And I believe this is also the word of the Lord for someone this morning. So I'm going to start here. Number one is this, and we have to start here, is, that, is this, God knows you. You should write that down today and stare at it on your page. And let it just remind you and flow over you today. And this is why we've got to come to church every week. This is why we've got to be in community of believers because we need to be reminded of facts like this. God knows you. And just like last week where I said that it's actually God's choice to dwell in community of believers, that's what he does. It's exactly the same with this. So God, the God of the universe is here right now, but the God of the universe who created the heavens and the earth, part of the Red Sea, the God that creates everything that we see knows you personally. One to one. Over a table, picture sitting down, two people. God knows you intimately. And that's where we start. God knows you and God knows me. Let me show you a couple of scriptures. Jeremiah 12 and verse 3. But you, O Lord, 
know me, you see me and test my heart toward you. John chapter 10 and verse 27, Jesus confirms it for us. He says, my sheep hear my voice, look at it, and I know them and they follow me. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 12, for, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I, I know in part then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. It's the greatest desire to know Him and be known by Him, to have that revelation today that God knows me. And He knows me because of this one truth today. He created me. I've been talking lately a little bit about, I don't know why my sailboat engine just seems to be kind of God uses pictures and parallels for me and sort of like, I don't know why, but he just shows me things through the stuff that just is in my life. And uh, the other day I was, in, I was enjoying my Sabbath, which is every Saturday. And we Sabbath from Friday afternoon to Saturday afternoon as a family. And that's just our downtime, just spending time grateful, loving God, being in, as a family, doing things that fill us up. And I was down on my sailboat and I met my friend Sean down there and we were going to do some maintenance and whatever. And I was just staring at this, we unpacked it all because you can unpack it all. And I was just looking at this diesel engine. And I'm just like, this thing is incredible. I mean, it's not even that big. It's like this. It's like the size of a small box. But it's got thousands and thousands of little components and parts in it. There's everything. There's mixing elbows. There's heat exchangers. There's belts. There's parts for oil. There's parts for fuel. There's filters. There's, there's all kinds of things. There's so many different parts. There's even a raw water pump. Like, what even is a raw water pump? I still haven't figured it out. But somehow, raw water from the ocean, from the intercoastal, goes through my engine, passes through it all, through belts and all kinds of stuff and hoses, cools the engine down, and then leaves through an exhaust pipe. I still haven't worked it out yet. But I was sitting there, I was looking at my little little diesel engine that I love so much. And I was thinking, you know, my friend Sean, he knows a lot about these engines. But I was thinking, you know, the the person who would know the most about this engine is the one who actually invented it. The one who actually took this little elbow and connected it to this this little part here and put the gasket over it and put the pump in there and said, oh, you've got to have the raw water over this side because if you have it over that side, it's going to mess with the fuel and that's not good. The person who actually invented it. Every single part, every single little, tiny little thing, every space, everything. And God showed me a picture like that. And he said, that's exactly how I am with your life. I invented it. I created it. I came up with it. Listen to me, friends. Someone, this is a word of the Lord for someone this morning. Is He created you. He knows every single little thing and he knows how it all comes together. He knows how it all fits. He put it together himself. You are his idea. God knows you. He invented you. He created you. No one, listen to me, knows you like he does. And you might be in here today and say, yeah, I know people. Some people know me. And I was thinking about that. I was like, oh man, I wonder who knows me the most. And that would be my beautiful wife of 13 years. She knows me pretty well, like really well. (laughs) But I was thinking, she doesn't even know me as well as God knows me. There's parts of me that I don't even know that God knows. There's parts of me that I haven't even discovered yet that God knows about me. See, that's how much God knows you, and that's how much God knows me. Because he created us, he invented us. That's how well he knows you. That's why it says in Psalm 37 and verse 4, it's a greater level of no. It says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. See, this is the thing about God this morning for you today is he knows what you love better than you know what you love. And if you're in here today and you're feeling like, man, I've just been forgotten by God. Maybe you've walked in here today and you're feeling like, I don't even know if God even checks in on me or has any idea about what's going on in my life. I'm in a struggle right now and I don't know if God's even aware of what's happening in my life. 
You've got to understand today, he doesn't, he's not only aware, he knows everything about what you're going through. He is intimately involved in the fabric of your life. That's why it says in Psalm 139, you probably know it where David says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well, but I want to read it to you in the message. It says, oh yes, you shape me first inside and then out. You form me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God, your breathtaking body and soul. I am marvelously made. Some people need today just to preach that over yourself. I am marvelously made. Not because you're special, even though you are, but because God has decided you're special. It says, I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit. How I was sculpted from nothing into something like an open book. You watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I lived one day. God knows you. And he wants you to know today he loves you. But you were created for him. But you're also created for others. So point number two this morning is this. God's got people for you to know. God has people for you to know. Listen to me. God has strategically placed people around you and you may not even know it. God has strategically placed people around you and you may not even know that they're there. Because here's the thing about the blessing of God. Sometimes in church we talk about Abraham's blessing. He's going to make me a blessing of many nations and I'm going to be a blessing. Unfortunately, what we do is we stop short of saying that's just for money. Or just for provision or just being able to provide for my family, which is all good and awesome things. But God's blessing on your life includes the people he wants to put in your life. The people he wants to strategically put around you. The people that he puts around you to bless you, to help you, to shape you, to form you, to be right there at that perfect time. This is how amazing God is. He puts one person in one place to say one word that will change everything for you. That's how detailed God is with the people in your life. That's why it's so important to be in community. This is why God cares about this stuff so much. Because God in his infinite wisdom has decided to use very human people when it comes to your life. God has people for you to know. I wonder today if you know people. I wonder today if you would recognize some of the people that God's put in your path. You know, Jill and I were reflecting on this the other day in pre- previous seasons. We've had people in our lives and we were reflecting on how much of a blessing they were. But then today I look at the people that he strategically put in my life today, our life today, and I'm like, man, it's just like I'm just as blessed today as I was then. See, God uses people, and this is why community is so important. Because, friend, you cannot do life alone. And why would you want to? I've made it a thing of mine, and this is just something that I decided a while back. I said, you know what, I'm just... I'm just going to intentionally want to meet new people. You might think that's strange, but I just want you to think about it. Sometimes in life we get a little along and we think, ah, I I got, you know, I got Bob and I got John. (laughs) I go play golf with Bob and John and, you know, we swing the clubs, hit a few balls, you know, it's all good. You're ripping yourself off. When new people come into your world, it's like, oh my goodness, this is awesome. New perspective, new angle, new thinking, new thoughts, new encouragement. I'm not saying you give up on Bob and John or whoever, whatever their names were. Still go make your tea time. But just be the type of person. Let's be the type of church when it comes to community. Man, I love meeting new people. Come across new people. Hey, what's your story? Where are you from? What are you... What do you love? Tell me about your kids. See, God has people for you to know. And maybe today the encouragement is, hey, just don't shut yourself off to the potential of people in your world. 
Because it can be a game changer in Jesus' name. Isolation is not good. Like we read about in that Harvard study, but it's actually in the Word of God well, below, well before any Harvard researcher showed up. Proverbs 18 and verse 1, Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. Other translation says he rages against all wise counsel. This is why we need people in our world. I, I, I'm not too proud to say it, but there are people in my world who make me better. Make me look better. Make me sound better. Make me appear way more educated than I am. It's good to know you. It's good to be known by you. Isolation is actually the antithesis of godly community. God has multi-dimensional blessing for you, and it's not just one thing or another. It's so many different things. You know, I remember the example in Scripture of Paul and Barnabas. I love Barnabas. I love reading about him. I love studying him. You know, his name means son of encouragement. I want to be called that. But Paul and Barnabas, you know, the, sometimes we look at the, those two guys in Scripture and we're like, oh, they must be these spiritual giants. And yes, they were. But they did life together. I mean, they were in, they were in the trenches together. They traveled together, like hard travel. They did missionary journeys together. They had sharp disagreements, so much so the end of where we hear about Barnabas is he just goes. That's it. We don't hear about him anymore. But for a long, long time, they did life together. And the iron sharpened iron and the achievement, the accomplishment, giants of the faith. Whole places in the world changed for the gospel because of these two guys. Listen to me, doing life together. God has people for you to know and for me to know. In Jesus' name. Would you stand with me? Come on, let's be people that are committed to community. Amen? Amen. Committed to doing life with people. Let's not let the current circumstances mean that we draw back from community. Even if you're online today, this message is for you. You can still be in community. You can still be planted in the house of the Lord. Doing life with people, not doing life alone. People bless you. I wrote this down. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. People bless you. People help you. People sharpen you. People challenge you. People understand you. And people love on you. So how are you when it comes to knowing people? Do you have people you know? Are there people that know you? Sometimes it takes vulnerability. Honesty, transparency. You know, we've got to be the type of people, especially in the current age, we lead the example, be the leaders when it comes to ringing people up and saying, hey, I'm having a bad day. I need some help. Will you pray for me? Let's be a people that are committed to community, not doing life alone, but having our people, knowing our people, and being known in Jesus' name. Well, hey, before I finish, I just want to take a moment. When I was talking about the fact that God knows you, I keep calling it a fact because it's truth. And sometimes when you're confronted with truth, it can be so confronting that it's just sometimes it's difficult to accept. Because sometimes our pride gets in the way right here and we think, yeah, okay, God knows me, but I'm just going to be hard-headed about it. I'm speaking from experience here. But I wonder today if you could declare these three things. And I wrote them down as I was preparing this message. I feel like the Holy Spirit gave them to me. This, God loves you. God loves me. He's my heavenly father. The second thing was this, Jesus is my savior. He's my high priest and my salvation pioneer. And three, the Holy Spirit is with me. I'm going to say those three things again. God loves me. He's my heavenly father. Jesus is my savior. He's my salvation pioneer my high priest forever. And three, the Holy Spirit is with me. I wonder if you could declare all those three things. But they all start with one step, and that's saying yes to Jesus. That's acknowledging your need of Him. And I want to pray for people that have never done that before. Whether you're here with us or you're online, so with every head bowed and eyes closed, right now, people considering where they stand spiritually, 
Fred, have you ever said yes to Jesus? Have you ever encountered him in a personal way, online, in the living room, wherever you're at? I'm crazy enough to believe that God has orchestrated the event so you would be there watching this right now, listening to what I'm saying. That God loves you. That Jesus has saved you. And the Holy Spirit is ready to be with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count to three. But if that's you today, either you're here with us in person or you're part of our service online. But when I get to three, I just want you to lift up your hand. And what are you saying? You're saying, yeah, I want to start that relationship. I want to begin on that journey. The Bible says if we open up our hearts, we believe that Jesus is Lord, that God raised him from the dead. Romans says this, says you will be saved. Scripture also says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. This is not an exclusive message. This is the most inclusive message there is. Jesus is for everyone. So if you want to take that first step and be included in that prayer today, it's what I'm going to do. I'm going to count to three. When I get to three, just lift your hand up. If you're online, just type in, I'm raising my hand. That's all I want you to do. And I'll include you in a prayer. And then we'll get done here. Here we go. One, God loves you, friend. He would have sent Jesus if it was just for you. He knows you better than you know yourself. You were created for relationship with him. Two, the Bible says that now is the appointed time of salvation. This is what I believe. This, this is your hour. This is where the Holy Spirit is drawing you near to the Father. I believe this is your hour. This is your minute. This is your moment. Don't wait another second. Three, if that's you today, just lift up your hand. Whether you're with us right now in the building or you're online, just shoot up your hand. No one's looking around high enough and long enough for me to see it. I'll include you in the prayer. If you're joining us online and you want to be part of this prayer, just type in the comment box, I'm raising my hand. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. It's as simple as saying yes to Jesus. You know, we don't have to know everything. We just have to accept that God has already done everything. Awesome. Well, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're all going to pray this prayer together. If you're watching online, I want you to pray with me in this moment. But we're all going to pray this prayer together because this is the truth is we are in community. We are here together. And we as the church, we're going to be the church with you as you declare your faith and your trust in Jesus right now. So here we go. Dear Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died for me. Thank you that you rose again so that I could have life. Forgive me my sins of all the things I've done wrong. I make a choice today to follow you, Jesus, to be a child of God for the rest of my days. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Amen. Come on. Well, hey, if you prayed that prayer, you raised your hand or maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you still prayed this prayer. It's what I want you to do. If you're here with us today, I want you to grab a Bible on the way out. They look like this. And they're on a table on the way out. You can do a speed pickup. Speed pickup, you know, it's like the thing now. Um, but we'd love to give you this Bible. And it's simply this. It's us just saying, hey, you're awesome. We're excited for you. Here's a Bible. And it's just as simple as that. It's like, hey, get the Word of God in you. Fill out this... Uh, card. I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be a card in there, but it's just a card that says, I have decided. You could fill out your, your details. And um, I think it's pretty powerful to do that. It's actually one guy in our church pulled up today and he had, I have, he had his I have decided card on his dash in his car. How awesome is that? But we'd love for you to grab a Bible, fill out that card. If you joined us online and you made that decision, you prayed that prayer, reach out to our online pastors in the chat. We're going to get one of these Bibles to you. We'll mail it to you. Um, we'll do whatever it takes. We'll send it by a drone. We probably won't do that, but, but we're just grateful for you. We love you. And so I'm going to pray for us as we finish the service. If you're leaving, you're not staying for the 11, would you pray for the 11 when you head, head on out? Would you be bold enough to do that, church? To believe for God to show up in the next service and to do incredible things in the lives of people? Awesome. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for time in your house, Lord. We know there's nothing sweeter for you than to hear your children playing in your house, spending time in your house, God. So, Father, we thank you for it, God. We pray that we would be people of community, 
people understand that we're known by you, that you know us, Lord, but also you have people for us to know. So God, we thank you for it. We pray you'd bless it in Jesus' name. And we all said together, amen, amen, amen. amen. Love you, church. See you next week.